Hey, good morning and welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner and Photography Weekly. This is episode number 78 for Sunday, February 17th, 2013. And today is the birthday of my son. So if anybody ever watched uh, Zach's show before there, The Noodle, you might want to uh, give him a shout out today. This is his birthday. So with that said, folks, let's go ahead and get started here with episode number 78. Okay, very good. Well, let's see. Everybody made it back here this week. If you're not in our chat room, please come over and jump in the chat room. We'd love to see you in there this morning. And I'm going to give our official shout outs right now uh, to everybody that is in the chat room. We have uh, Eddie, good morning to you. Brian, Cheryl, Debbie, Flyer here, Mike JP, Peter in the UK, and the Green Hornet. Well, good morning to everybody. I'm glad you came on board this morning with us. So, there is a screen. We're ready to start working. All right, let me get this microphone around here. All right, folks. Now, this is the only, the best place to start when I teach Photoshop elements is just that. It's the, the best place to start is to teach you the... Uh, ins and outs of the organizer because if you can't organize your content then you're not going to ever be able to find your content and that's going to be a bad thing um, just bring us up here so you want to be able to find your content to make it easier to be able to uh, work on your pictures so and able to do that here, this is Photoshop Elements 11 Organizer, and this is the newest organizer out. And they've made some changes. Now the changes they made uh, to the interface are quite nice, and they, and they just flow. Everything just seems to work very, very well. So what we're going to do here today is we are going to go ahead and start using our organizer. The first place I want you to look at, though, when you open this, and so many people don't do this, so many people don't open the preferences up and have a look around there to see what's in the preference pane. So we are going to do that. Let's bring this up here. And so many people do not bring this preference pane up and look around it. Let's try and see here where we're at with this. All right. So your preference pane on your elements organizer is under the Adobe pull down menu or file if you're on Windows and it's under preferences. Now, under preferences, we have some stuff in here that we can talk about that we need to set up and we need to work on. A couple of these are basically the general stuff is show your files oldest to newest. That makes sense because when you're importing our pictures, as you're going to see in a little bit, you want to make sure those newest pictures are on top. All right. So oldest uh, within each day or the newest file within each day. Now remember that, that's important, each day. Not particularly when they were imported into the organizer, we're just gonna do it by day. So I leave it set to the oldest first within each day. Next here is the date format. How do you want your date to be uh, imported? Month, day, and year always seems to be the best to me. Now I'm not gonna go through all these, but what I do wanna to touch base on is some of these areas that you need to make sure that you have selected. Such as offline volumes. When you go to preview your offline volumes, what that means is 
if you have an external hard drive and that hard drive is off, this will allow you to bring those pictures up at a certain uh, pixel setting. So if we're doing 800 by 600 or 640 by 480, it keeps a copy of that file on your hard drive. So it's a smaller thumbnail file and I usually leave it set to 640 by 480. The next thing we want to talk about is the editing tab here. Now why do we want to know about that? Well very simple it's if you go to edit and you have Photoshop um, let's say you have Photoshop on here with Photoshop elements that editing program by default will be found by your elements and you can use that just by right clicking on a picture and I will show you that after a bit but let's say if you're using um, Google Picasa as one of your editors you can actually browse out and you can find Picasa under your applications or under your program files on your Windows PCs and you can put that in there then we would have another editor we can use to edit our pictures camera or card reader so what this is telling us is when our files are imported where do we want those to be imported to now I don't know why at one time I must import something in the interns here so we're going to change that and we're just going to make this it should always be pictures so it should be your name and pictures just like so again if you're on a Windows PC it'll be users your name and pictures is where you want it to go here's something that a lot of people make a mistake on right here where it says automatically fix red eye I don't like to do that because every single picture being imported into your organizer is going to be looked at for red eye and let's face it a lot of pictures like uh, you see these pictures around here with the snow and the trees there's no face but it's going to be looked at anyway automatically suggest photo stacks that's entirely entirely up to you we will look at uh, stacking pictures here in a little bit and I'll show you how that works but I don't normally let it automatically do that uh, make a custom group name and a keyword tag you can do that but I don't like to um, allow that to do that automatically the next one here is your keyword tags and your albums you can see here where it's categories are either manual or alphabetically and everything else is alphabetically so I like to set my categories as manual and we will be looking at those all right somebody said for some reason the picture and picture froze and it did thanks for telling me that okay so you should still have the desktop moving around there all right that's happened before that's a camera that I use on top of the uh, one monitor here and uh, that has happened before so thanks for throwing that up there there is sharing there you can check your uh, Microsoft Outlook or your standard mail if you have that on your computer the Adobe partner services I just leave it check here but if you don't want it to check for updates you can say uh, notify me about service updates or you can uncheck all these so they don't notify you at all and you can do it manually you have a way of doing that media analysis what this is telling me is when pictures are imported of people it wants to analyze those automatically and I leave that up because when you start doing facial recognition it will start looking at more and more of the pictures to understand who the faces are as they're coming in and it will automatically tag those if you have that unchecked you have to manually do the analyzing which you don't want to do that manually okay visual search options just leave that checked so actually all these last ones here are going to just be checked by default So that is very uh, easy and the preferences in a nutshell. The biggest thing to worry about is make sure your pictures are coming into the right place. And make sure that if you have an extra editor, you have an extra editor listed here. So that's the main things right there. Click OK on here. The next thing we're going to be talking about here is we are going to be looking at how we import the pictures 
Now I'm going to bring up the other camera here since this other one does not seem to be working well. And this one over here seems to work a lot better. So we're going to bring up this camera here. Now there's a couple ways you can import from your actual memory cards. And the one thing I don't like to see anybody do when they import their pictures is plugging the camera into the computer. And why I don't like to see this because you're using your battery. Then you're going to have to go ahead and you're going to have to recharge your battery up. So I would rather see you do it from what's known as a card reader. Here's one here. And you can pick these up at your local discount stores for about 20 bucks. This one happens to read any type of card you can possibly think of. I like this one. Uh, it's a, it's just called an all-in-one. I mean, it, it pretty much picks up any single card you want. What's nice about these is you take your memory card out of your camera. Your camera don't have to be turned on. You plug the card in here. This plugs into your computer with USB, and you're good to go. You can get your pictures in. Most computers and laptops I've seen nowadays coming out actually has an SD card reader in them where you just take the card and just stick it in your computer. That's a nice way to do it. Um, that's about the main ways I've found of importing pictures into my computer. Um, like I said, the other, the other way, if you have nothing else, I mean, I have that little point shoot camera that has a, a weird memory card to it. It's an old Fuji card. And that one I do have to plug into the computer and have to turn the camera on to get the import. So now we're going to look at once that happens, how does the pictures get imported into the organizer? So we're, let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right, so we're back at our organizer here, and we're going to show you how that happens. All right. So if we go under the pull down menu for file, get photos and videos, so it's going to say here. And we're going to do it right now. We're going to pull them in from a camera or a card reader. Let's click on that. And our card reader, the importer actually opens. I want to show you first the standard dialog. All right. With that said, we're going to drag this down a little bit because I want to show you this. Just to make sure you can see this well. All right. There we go. Right there. Okay, so this is the standard organizer. Most times when you go to open up your elements and you put that memory card in, that's what's going to open up is the standard downloader. And it has a very uh, limited amount of options in here, but it has enough to get your pictures in to the organizer and get you working. <laughs> Let's go over a couple of these. Get photos from, obviously, uh, this Nikon D7000. That's my memory card. I have 60 files selected on that card, so that's good to go. Where's it going to go? The location is pictures. That's We did that in preferences. And then it's going to create some subfolders right there on the other end. Now, choose a subfolder. We can do this in a couple different ways. We can do a custom name. That's how I like to import when I bring things in because I can give it a name based on wherever I was shooting at. But you may want to do it as a date. And again, you can pick out whatever date you want, however you want it to be. Let's say, uh, we'll just go month, day, year. All right. Now, it's showing you two subfolders, and people will say, Jack, why is it showing two subfolders? It doesn't make sense. The reason is, it's already seeing those pictures and saying, wait, these are shot at two different dates. And it's going to put those in the dates off that card based on when they were shot. And that's from the metadata. So we'll be looking at that. That's how it finds those subfolders. Now, rename files. You can do this. And when I'm shooting weddings, I do, I do a custom name. And usually on my memory cards, I'll have the wedding on one memory card and the uh, reception on another memory card. So I would name this here, uh, let's say wedding, 
Uh, let's just give it a name. Let's say uh, Sam's Wedding. And we do a plus one because then it will go in Sam's Wedding. Obviously, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and work its way up. That way, when I'm working on these pictures, I know those are wedding pictures. If it's reception, I just change that to reception. And it, that allows me to bring those in. Now, what do I want to do after I bring those pictures in? After copying, do not delete originals. By default, be careful, because by default, it's after copying, delete originals. What does that mean? That means they're gone off your memory disk. Now, if you're really, uh, uh, how can I say that? If you are guaranteed uh, that those pictures are coming in and you're guaranteeing that that disk can be cleaned off, that's fine. Do it then. What I would suggest to do, this is just me personally, is I would suggest to do not delete originals because that way it's making a copy of those pictures onto my computer, but I still have that disk intact just in case something goes wrong. And believe me, folks, when you're doing weddings, senior portraits, uh, whatever you're doing out there professionally shooting, even if you're shooting your, your kid's baby pictures, right? You want to make sure that you have those pictures and you have them safe and sound, backed up once before you delete that memory card. So my policy is I don't delete my memory card until I put it back into my camera and then I reformat it there. Once that's all set up and done, we can sim simply click on Get Media and it will pull all that media in. But before we do that, I want to show you the Advanced Dialog box. So now at the bottom, we'll click on Advanced Dialog. Resize this window. Bring this window up here. And this window down here. Now we can see a little bit more options. And on these options here, the options that we have available to us is we can now see all of the pictures in here. And you can go through and check them and uncheck them. Maybe you don't want a couple pictures. You say, oh, that doesn't look quite right. Over on this side, we have that same create a subfolder based on our short date. We have that same naming convention right here that we're using. Down here, we have some interesting stuff we can talk about. One is automatically fix red eyes. Again, I do not suggest to do that because it's taking the time to look at every picture and you don't want that to happen. Next is automatically suggest stacks. We've seen that before. We don't want that to happen. And group names and tags. Again, we don't want that to happen. Import into album. This is so critical that you need to know this. And the reason that is, it's going to save you a ton of time. Click on settings. And it's going to give us our albums we have that we haven't worked on yet, but we will be looking at here shortly. But these are already albums in here that I have in my Photoshop Elements. So we can either click on an album, or we can go up to the top where it says albums and we create a new one. Let's create a new one called Coasters. The reason I want to do that, and I hit my Enter key, is because now those pictures will be imported and already placed into an album called coasters. I don't have to do that step later. So that's already worthwhile of having this advanced dialog open. Click OK. Again, after copying, do not delete originals. And that's my default because I don't want them deleted. Apply metadata. Maybe you want your name down here. And copyright, um, you can do a copyright to Maybe I'm going to copyright them to my company name here, Memories by Jack. And the creator is just my name. So I'm going to embed that into that picture's metadata just so it's in there and we know it's good to go. Once we have all this selected and everything's ready to go, let's go ahead and click on Get Media. And now we see that those pictures are going to be imported. There's only 60 on this particular uh, disk here. And I do ask if you have any questions, just keep writing those down in your paper there. And uh, 
We will address those here very soon. I'd like to say good morning to some other folks that actually uh, showed up here this morning. Good morning to you guys. Uh, let's see who's new in here. Flyer here, uh, June. <laughs> Kevin, good morning to you. Uh, I think I've seen Mike before. Unidentified, 41959. Good morning. And user 542625. Good morning to everybody in there. Once again, this morning, you are learning Photoshop Elements. This is Photoshop Elements 11. And in Photoshop Elements 11, right now, we are learning the organizer today, inside and out views. So you'll be uh, more prepared when you buy Photoshop Elements. Or when you open it, maybe I'm going to give you some more use out of it. I mean, that's a possibility. If you're not chatting, you can find our chat room at jackstechcorner.com. And click on the live show at the top, and there's a pop out chat window. We use IRC to chat. So as these pictures are coming in here. And believe me, <clears throat> this morning, right now, it's not so much the content of what the pictures are. Uh, we'll be looking at down the road when we do some uh, editing and some advanced editing with Photoshop Elements uh, 11. But right now, this is more to get you used to uh, getting these pictures in the organizer. It's so important. Okay, and good morning, Jessica. I see you're in there this morning. And we're just letting these pictures uh, populate in here. They're pretty large files. I don't know if anybody can see that or not in there. It says NEF, so these are obviously uh, raw images uh, that I took recently. And I get a lot, a ton of emails all the time about, Jack, should I shoot RAW? Should I shoot JPEG? We did a show a few weeks ago about that. And you know what? Uh, it depends on why you're shooting it, what you're shooting, and uh, what you're planning on doing with the picture, I think, is the key. Cameras do a really nice job on JPEG, and it saves you a ton, a ton of card room. So... We are going to try to get through this lessons today. Um, the lessons may run over a little bit. I can't let you know that because we have a lot of topics uh, to discuss here. We can already see. I don't know if you can see this yet. Oh, let me see if I can change this capture area here. Open us back up here to all this. I'm fighting a cold, so you have to excuse me. I'm trying to not sniffle in the microphone. That's very uh, unprofessional. And Jessica saying, always raw. A lot of you guys are shoot. I know you guys love to shoot the raw images. And it is a good policy because if you mess up, if something happens, you have a lot more abilities to fix it, I think. All right. Now. With that said, right up here, remember earlier I was talking about creating the album when we imported. Well, look what happened. Let me bring this over here, and I'm going to show you these albums. Show you what happened right there. You can see right here where it created an album now called Coasters. And all those pictures that we just imported are already in that album. So that already saved us a step in organizing our pictures because we had some insight about where we wanted to put those. All right. Now with that said, let's move on to the next part here is the next scenario is just this. Um, Jack, I, I just bought Photoshop Elements, uh, but I've been using uh, Windows Picture, Windows Media Picture Center, uh, for years and what I want to do now is I would like to um, I would like to be able to import those pictures into my organizer and get those organized check how would I do that well that is called importing from files and folders let's go ahead and take a look at that if we go to file get photos and videos 
from files and folders. And all it's going to do here is going to pull up this file, um, the, the file manager. So either in Windows or on the Mac, it doesn't matter, folks. These work so much um, in tangent anymore. You don't have to worry about, I'm on a Mac, I'm on a PC. Oh, my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Because it's just that simple where, you know, I mean, it's one is the other, really, to be honest with you. Um, looking here. Trying to find something decent we can pull over. Um, that is actually from our last class. Here is Comet's birthday party. Uh, let's just grab some of these. And we'll just hold my shift key down. I select whichever ones I want. And it's going to actually pull them in. We have automatically suggest stacks here on the bottom, just like we did before. We also have automatically fixed red eyes, which is not selected. And we're just going to simply click on get media. What you will not see now, though, is there's no way to create a new album, right? There's just no way to do it here. And there's no advanced button to make anything different. So we're just going to click on get media. At that point, it's going to pull those pictures in. Yeah, it's going to, and again, these are raw images because, like we said, most of us do shoot raw images. All right. Now we did bring those files in. Now, what I want to do at this point is, once these files are imported, we can see now how we get pictures in the organizer. I'd like to thank you once again for watching Photography Weekly each and every week. And I wanted to say a special thank you and a little short commercial break here for our sponsors of this show. First and foremost, let me uh, send out my uh, special uh, invitation to you there to come over to jackstechcorner.com. I have a brand new Elements 10 Volume 1 DVD, and it's going for $20. And if you pull this pull-down menu down, you'll see a lot of other options in there for you also. Or if you'd rather, instead of learning uh, on a DVD, and if you have high-speed internet, you may want to sign up for one of my online classes. The online classes are there for you, and they are on uh, Lightroom 4 for all. It's a very easy way to learn Lightroom 4. And there is a uh, Elements 10 class, actually the one on DVD, that will be coming out as an online class. So you will have actually that option also. Next, let me thank our friends over at Smug Mug. Smug Mug is where I do all my professional printing at, and I wish that you would sign up also. If you go to my website, jackstechcorner.com, on the left-hand side, there's links. If you click on that link and enter the special code, you'll get a 20% discount. And that's huge because the pro version is $150. So if you take 20% off of that, you're going to be good to go. You save a ton of money and start making money right away. Or you can use them for all your personal printing needs for whatever type of photography printing you want to do. Next, if you do any green screen photography, then check out Ken's site, greenscreenwizard.com. Once again, go to my website, jackstechcorner.com. Click on the link on the left, and that way Ken will know that you're coming from Jack's Tech Corner. Once again, that's greenscreenwizard.com for all your green screen photography and now video needs and special hello and thank you to our friends over at amazon.com if you're buying anything from amazon and man don't we all buy from amazon anyway go to my website jackstechcorner.com on the left again click on the link to go to amazon before you buy anything that gives us a, like a one percent uh, deal there of your total sell so it helps the site out here it helps us out and it keeps it to, so we can buy new equipment to keep bringing you these great shows and keep on going. So if you're buying from Amazon, 
just go ahead and click that link and buy as you normally would and I'd like to thank our HDR sponsors HDR soft and photomatics photomatics does a great job I'm using the pro version now photomatics pro 4.2 and the Lightroom plugin, and it is absolutely fantastic how it's integrated with Lightroom. So, once again, that's Photomatics by HDR Soft, and you'll find those at hdrsoft.com. Download the trial version today, you won't be upset or disappointed. So, that's it. Let's get back on to the show here and more learning. So, what we're going to talk about next is since we no uh, major questions on that one is we're going to start talking about building albums now the albums themselves the way we got to build these and I always address this I don't know the age group of everybody out there watching this show but what we like to talk about is uh, when I teach these in live classes what we do is I usually bring out a shoebox full of pictures because you know over the course of uh, geez how many years uh, we've been collecting pictures of our family, uh, of our friends, and they always seem to end up in shoe boxes. Even uh, now when my parents came to me and said, hey, you know, take these pictures to keep the uh, legacy of our family going, they hand me a shoe box. So that shoe box now in Photoshop Organizer is in the Elements Organizer is no more than an album. That's how I like to look at it. And then inside that shoe box, there's usually envelopes in there from the pictures get developed by Kodak or whoever. I like to take those pictures in those envelopes and we consider that to be keyword tagging. So now we're going to look at how do we organize our pictures once they're in the organizer. That's why it's called the organizer, right? Uh, if it was just a mass uh, input of pictures, it would be called the disorganizer. So let's go ahead and we're going to start taking a look at that and uh, see how this goes. So let's go ahead and get started. Again, if you want to hold your questions until we get done with this uh, part of the albums, and then I'll be taking more questions. So if you have questions as we go along, just kind of jot it down your notes and we'll keep moving right on there. All right. Okay, folks. So. Here's the organizer. Here's the pictures I just imported. You've seen we imported these with the file menu. We just came up here to the top and we went to get photos and videos. And we did this uh, from files and folders. We pulled these video, these uh, pictures in, these photos. So now we need to do, first of all, is we're going to make an album. Because remember, when you import from your computer, it doesn't automatically do it. Like if you're importing from your card. All right, it's the same kind of deal. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select all these. You can do this in any number of ways. You can click on the first one. You hold your shift key down, click on the last one. That'll select them all. We can click up here to the left or to the right, and you can just pull your mouse down and over. That selects them all. So however you want to select all those pictures. Once you do that, if you go up to Albums up here at the top, and click the little pull down menu you're going to see right here where it says new album or new album category what we're going to talk about right now is that we're going to talk about the new album so let's go to new album select that and over on the right you're going to notice that all those pictures that we just selected are in that new album right here all we have to do now is give it a name so we'll give it a name comet party the category, you see we I have daily trips in there, but we're going to be talking about that in a second. We're going to just leave it right now as top level category. With that said, just simply click OK. And now what that did for us, it actually built the album for us, and it's now over here on the left. Where it says Comets Party, and there's all Comets Pictures. You click on coaster from before there's all of our coaster pictures uh, from when I was on my, a recent trip and if you go back here that's comets pictures from his party so you can already see how valuable an album is and how it makes it so important for you to have everything in your albums in a proper way 
So now that we have albums selected and albums made, you know, it's important also in that shoe box to have dividers in there. Uh, dividers would be stuff like uh, maybe birthday parties. Uh, there may be dividers for kids. There may be a divider in there for holidays. Whatever you can think of, we can build it in our organizer. So let's go up to albums again, click the pull down menu, and we're going to click on new album category right here. And we're going to create a new category. And what we're going to call this one is we'll go ahead and call this birthdays. Just like so. Click OK. Now, over here on the left, you can see that we have categories here, birthdays, day trips, and video projects. So under birthdays, what I want to do now is since Comet, obviously, that's his birthday party, we want to grab this album, and we're just going to left-click on it and drag it down. We can drop it right into birthdays. Now what that's shown us is we can now have Comet underneath that birthdays in there. Close that back up. You can see now it took him out of the bulk here, out of the root, and it moved him down to the uh, category birthdays. Again, if you clicked on one of these, uh, let's say coasters, and we right clicked on it and we went to edit, you can see again over here on the right where all the pictures are, we can always select the pull down menu and we can change it to categories over here also. So we'll go to day trips for that one and we'll just say OK. And now you can see over on the left, it actually put it under day trips right there coasters. Next we're going to talk about is keyword tagging or this is the actual envelopes which is inside of the actual um, the shoe box. So we have the shoe box and then inside that shoe box we actually have envelopes. Well to me the tagging would be your envelopes. So to get to that, you're going to simply click on tag info at the bottom here. You see right here at the bottom, right hand side, click on that. That's going to bring up this section here. Now you can add custom tags. There's some already in here. Or we can just simply type some tags and add our own custom tags. So let's say we want to add a tag uh, for brides. And hit the enter key. Or click that. There you go. There is brides right there. All right. And what we want to do now is we're going to grab a couple of these pictures. And we're going to tag those with the word brides. So we'll just simply click on brides there. We typed it in. And if we click on add, it's going to add the little tag on the bottom of the pictures. You can also see it down here in the data underneath of it. There's now a little tag with the word brides. So if we click on our tags at the top here, you'll see now where it says other and brides. This is a list of all of our keyword tags is right here. And here you can do smart tags. And that is in the order of the same thing as the smart filters were. That you can actually do stuff based on if it was blurred, uh, medium quality, high quality, and so forth. Now, once something is tagged and we click on that tag, we can actually bring up the pictures that was in there all together. But what I found is you have to click on top here. So if we click here and then click on Brides, you'll see that the Brides ones that we tagged are the actually the other ones that come up. And what's nice about this, the keyword tags are on the top once you do that. So if you uncheck Brides, all the pictures come back up. If you check Family, and there's nothing selected, Family will not show up. Let's go back. 
what we want to do now is let me uh, bring up some other pictures here. Let's say, for instance, we have old uh, Comet Boy here, and we're going to create a new tag. So if I just click this pull-down menu, I can go new tag, new keyword tag, new subcategory, or new category. You can see that right there. Let's click on new category, and the category, we're going to call this birthdays. So again, it's almost, as somebody in one class said, Jack, then you're duplicating your albums. You could be to a fact stating that correct correctly, but what you're actually doing is you're actually creating this to even be more um, drilled down so you can find your pictures even better. Pick out an icon for it and click OK. And it tells me that the keyword tag birthdays is already used. But it's right there because we did use birthdays on our albums, but now we have it also in our tags. And now if I right click on birthdays, I can go to create a new keyword tag. And we're going to call this one comet. Maybe comets. Now again, it's very simple to add that tag. All I got to do is I can highlight some of these pictures. Well, not that one. That's the cat. That's not comet. And we'll just simply drag the tag over and drop it. So again, if we have this open and we click on comment now, we click over here on the little arrow point to the right, you can see where it just gives us the pictures that are tagged. It's so very important to understand this because it's going to allow you to actually drill down your pictures and actually make it even better and easier to find your pictures when you're working with them. So the organizer is very, very powerful. It's very easy to use, but you have to organize your pictures. I know when I first started doing this, I already had thousands of pictures on my computer. And you, you have to start doing this and get all this set up and going. It takes quite a while to do so. So is there any questions on tagging? Everybody feels pretty comfortable with how to tag and how the tags work. Just uh, double checking here. So I want to throw it up in the chat room. Once again, uh, so everybody uh, is coming on board there knows where we're coming from. This is actually a, I call this the free play Sunday. And what that means is uh, this show is absolutely free for you to view. And um, if you looked on the jackstechcorner.com live show page at the bottom, uh, at any time during... Uh, during or after the show, because this show, this particular course is going to last four weeks. So I want you back here every Sunday, and we're going to learn about, first is organizing, then we're going to learn about editing, uh, the editor. You're going to learn everything there is to know about Photoshop Elements 11. And if you want to have that on DVD for years to watch over and over and over, then just simply down at the bottom of the page, click on the Buy It Now button, and you'll be ready to go. And uh, after four weeks... Uh, the DVD will be uh, produced, and you'll receive that in the mail. So you do have that option. Okay, so there's no questions there. Next thing we're going to look at in the organizer is what's called stacking pictures. Stacking pictures to me is a great way to keep things better organized. Because again, it's called the organizer because you want to organize things. So with that said, we're going to take some pictures here. Let's say these roller coasters at the top. And I'm going to combine those or stack those together. What I'm going to do here is highlight all these. I'm just simply click my mouse and drag over top of those. I'm going to right click over here. And when I do that and go down to stack, you can see it'll say stack selected photos. Where this comes in really, really handy is when you start editing. Let's say you have one picture and you save it four different times because there's four different edits. I like to stack those to keep those nicely, neatly together. So let's click on Stack Selected Photos. What happens now is those pictures are all here and they're in a stack. And they're in a drawer. Wow, you say a drawer, Jack? What are you talking about? Well, they're here and if I want to see them, all I got to do is click this little arrow right to the right of it 
and they'll open up. And again, they're all basically stacked together and they're in that drawer. Close it and you can see it's better organized. So let's say we had all these ones I shot indoors. Well, let's try to get these ones too down here. And I'll control click these ones over here. Watch how nice this makes this look. I'm going to right click on it, go to stack, and stack selected photos. These two here obviously was very, very bad because I was playing with ISO settings outside. I'm going to remove those from the album. All right, so now if I want to open that up again, I just simply click here and it opens them all back up. Again, it's very nice to have that. It's very, very organized at that point. The next thing I want to talk to you about is ratings. You know, the stars are underneath here. People's like, wow, why is there stars there? Because they think every picture I took is a five star picture. No, again, it's just another way to organize your pictures. Let's close this stack up here and we'll just play with some single pictures here. So as we go through, you're editing your pictures and you have that workflow going where you can look at the pictures and go, well, I'm going to work on my pictures and every picture I like, I'm going to go ahead and give it five stars. This is just a simple way so we can organize and get this thing broke down. So very quickly, I go through and I say, well, let's go. And I like these pictures. I'm going to give them five stars. Five. Five. It could be one. Whatever you feel like doing is fine. Five and five all right so what that does for me is when i'm looking at these pictures again later and i go to edit these or drill these down say these are a wedding and i just went through 400 pictures i want to see all the pictures that i want to edit all i gotta do is come up here to my ratings and click on five stars and only the pictures i marked with five stars will show up that way i know now that those are the pictures i want to edit it's a very simple way of doing things so it's called searching by ratings because you gave it a rating and you searched it. With that said, the last thing we're going to look at here today is looking at the properties of a picture because a lot of people don't really look at their properties too much of their pictures. And they get to the point where they don't know much about their picture, right? So let's go ahead and right click on one of these and we're going to go down to where it says show file info. And over here on the right, it's going to give us a bunch of information. If we go under metadata, it's going to give you even more information. It's going to tell you stuff like the exposure time. How long was your shutter open? The f-stop. What f-stop did I shoot it on? Right? Uh, it's going to tell me a focal length. And the focal length of the side was a 12 millimeter. Did I use the flash or not? I did not. And if I click on beside that, I got even more information all the way down through here. Now, why is that important? It's important, especially when you're learning photography, to start understanding when you have a beautiful picture and a really nice shot, to understand how that picture was taken. What did you do to make that beautiful shot? And then you'll be able to reproduce that in the future. That's why that is very, very important. All right. All right, let's see here. Okay, folks, so I really appreciate everybody coming in today. Uh, that's going to conclude part one of our four-part course series called Photoshop Elements 11. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this Sunday morning show, and I'm sure, or at least I hope, that you'll come back uh, in future Sundays here and work with us uh, with uh, even more Photoshop Elements 11. And even if you have 8, 9, or 10, most of the edits I'm going to do are going to be just fine for you and you're going to be absolutely perfect on it and be able to do some editing with us. So hopefully you took some notes. Uh, please spread the word around. And like I said, uh, thanks everybody again for coming. And until next week, keep those shutters clicking. Keep your editors editing. And I'll see you back here very soon on Jack's Tech Corner for another 
Photography Weekly. Bye for now, guys.